we are closing in to 60 days or in roughly 2 months until Alliance will be released. With that, I was also lucky enough to beta test Kingdom Rush Alliance before its release. Me, alongside popular people in the community you may know like Vaduk, MMLH, Eris, TGM, and many more. We are basically giving feedback, balance suggestions, and report any bugs. Funny enough, but the bugs that I have found throughout my beta testing were visual related. Like it had to do with the sprites and such. Anyways, my goal in this video is to give you guys a general idea of what to expect in the game without giving spoilers, specifically in topics such as why it will be better than Vengeance, why the two hero system works, why playing both sides is a good decision, and my thoughts and theories of the future of the franchise after the Alliance. But before I discuss my first point, I just want to say that currently Alliance is on the road to 100,000 wishlists on Steam. And with every 10k milestone, there is a special bonus from Ironhide. So help them out as there is roughly 60 days before Alliance gets released. And if you did wishlist it, you can join the Ironhide community server to gain a free role to choose from. It can be Dark Army or Linarian. And if you do have that role, you have a chance to participate in a giveaway where 5 Steam copies of Alliance will be given away for free if the goal of 100k wishlist has been reached. Anyways, enough of my yapping and discuss my first point on why Alliance will be better than Vengeance. All the criticism, all the hate, all the bad reviews were taken in consideration when making Alliance. Don't get me wrong though, Vengeance became better after the balance changes and Hammerhold DLC. Bad towers were buffed and OP towers were nerfed. Though I would still say that Vengeance still needs more balance changes to become on par with its predecessors as I still think that some of the entries in the franchise are still better than Vengeance. Meanwhile, Alliance just feels like a better Vengeance. The style, the UI, and even the direction feels a, a bit like Vengeance, but made way way better. Right now, as of beta testing, there are definitely some towers and heroes that need some balance changing, but don't worry. The developers are really listening to us beta testers for feedback. They are. They are likely learning from their mistakes from Vengeance as if you would ask me, I don't know how Frost Dragon or Inferno Tower got past beta testing of being balanced from its initial release. The dragons in Alliance are strong, yes, but definitely not as strong as from the previous heroes. The game is also faster paced, encouraging a more active gameplay and micro. Yes, expect a lot of micro from this game as it's no secret that you will have to micro your two heroes around. You don't want them to be AFK. There is even a tower you can micro for crying out loud. So to conclude this point, expect a more active and faster paced gameplay. No more sit back and let the hero spell do the work. Got that? Good. Because I now want to talk about how the two hero system and why it works. The two hero system was introduced way back in Frontiers and then Origins but then Vengeance didn't have any. But now, Alliance makes up for that shortcoming of Vengeance by having two heroes in every level that you can play. The biggest worry that I see with the community is how balanced will this feature be. Here I am to say that you should not worry as based from my veteran and impossible playthrough experience, the heroes are pretty on par with each other. The only exception I would say are of course the dragons, but like what I said earlier, the dragons are strong but not as strong. To also add to the balance, there is no more big spell like Reign of Fire, as the second hero spell is the one who takes up this role. The two heroes you will also have is the biggest key to a level's victory, as trust me when I say that this game requires micro. The game is faster paced and more enemies are being shown at you. Good luck beating the game without heroes and their spells. Beating the game with only one hero may be possible, but it's still hard to say. So to conclude this, I suggest playing this game in Veteran or Impossible and try to limit yourself into not using the dragons. Make sure to micro more as this game has more active gameplay, thanks to the enemies and of course the two hero system. Next up is why I think playing both sides is a good idea. We had the chance to play the good guys and the bad guys, now with a twist, we get to play both sides. Besides from a marketing perspective and fan service cause for the damn necromancer, it's a nice move on from the story. Both sides will be putting aside their grudges with each other and fight for the land against a common enemy who has one eye and is from another dimension. No 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 not you, but the overseer. It is confirmed by Ironhide that this will not be the last Kingdom Rush game but rather the end of the overseer. So now I wonder what will be the future of this franchise as soon as Alliance is considered a finished game. 
Could the sixth game have something completely new and unexpected? Will the Tear of Elini make a return or will the Iron Marines universe and the Junkwood universe merge with Kingdom Rush? Iron Marines is already doing it little by little with of course Shatra and the Overseer. So should we expect more Iron Marine related things in Kingdom Rush 6? Only time will tell. But those tales can be only told on another day. It is good that the community has gone this far. Let's appreciate and support Ironhide with what we have now, aka Kingdom Rush Alliance.